Hi, my name is Chad Carnes with MCA Connect, and you're watching a very special Halloween edition of Five Good Minutes in Microsoft Dynamics AX. Uh, today, I decided to dress as the most scary thing I can think of. That's right, an MCA technical lead resource. Uh, all MCA technical uh, consultants aren't complete without their fake Ray-Ban glasses, uh, their favorite old t-shirt, and finally the mandatory uh, caffeinated IV drip that they're all required to have. Uh, the other great thing about our technical consultants is they can do 30 things at one time. And today, uh, we're going to look at some functionality around business intelligence, and we're going to build a data set that doesn't just build you one report, but instead builds you 30 reports. And uh, like our technical consultants, I'm going to show you how to complete 30 reports at just one time. And we're going to do it in just five good minutes. So we're going to go ahead and start off with a requirement. And the requirement here is that we're going to create a report that shows everything that's committed to sell uh, that has been shipped but hasn't been invoiced. We're going to filter by customer group, and we only want stuff that's in CEU. So before we ever create anything, we need to draw it. So if you look here, uh, I've got the customer info, I've got step one, which is the sales order, and I've got the packing slip and the invoice transactions connected to the sales line. So in this data set, everything is going to be linked to the sales line. So now let's go ahead and go into AX, and we always start out with the functional side. So let's go ahead and go into sales orders, and uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the invoice tab, and we're going to figure out what tables uh, the invoice transactions. So in that diagram I just showed you, we're going to demo how to create uh, just the right-hand box, customer invoice trans. And as you can see, the top line is on the sales uh, journal, and the bottom line is the cust invoice trans. So now I'm going to jump into the AOT, and we're going to create some cubes, uh, part of our data set. So the first thing you're going to do is you want to want to create a query. So I've already created the query here, but if you notice, uh, I'm bringing in the exact same data sets uh, that I had in the previous example through an inner join. So the next step, uh, so I could actually use these as O data feeds if I wanted to uh, in this example, but instead I went ahead and created a view, and we're going to turn these into cubes. So you just drag your query into a view, and then you specify which fields uh, in your query you would like to show up in your view. Um, I always go ahead and check my view at this point to make sure that it matches up to the, the table or the base table that I'm using. Um, so from there, uh, I grab my view, and uh, we go ahead and drag it into my perspective. You can see I've created four perspectives here, one for each box in my data set. Uh, and then I have to come in, and I have to change this to OLAP, and I also have to change my attributes and measures in the field. So now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of show you how we process the cube. So normally I'd be creating one, but instead I've already created these, so I'm going to go ahead and update it. So you notice I have a sales data set, but I've got all four cubes in that data set. So what's nice is, is I have my sales data set kind of up top, and that's kind of the project that all my cubes sit in. So, uh, so as you see when we connect in a second, you'll see that I've connected the sales data set, but I'll have all four sales cubes uh, that, I can, that I can pull in and link together in kind of a drag and drop situation. That's how we're able to create 29 or 30 different reports. So uh, here I'm just kind of walking through how to, uh, how to process these cubes, and you'll notice the magic of editing, I've kind of, uh, I've kind of uh, uh, shortcutted that. So now here I'm going to go ahead and connect to my, uh, my database, and, uh, and I'm going to connect to my sales database that I've created. So we're going to go and call this the customer trans, and if you notice, I've got all four perspectives, or all four cubes in there. So right here I'm going to show you how to, how to link to the customer trans uh, that I created in, my, in the previous step. And now I'm just dragging some uh, different attributes and some measures uh, into my customer invoice trans uh, data set here, or, or, uh, or power pivot file. So what I'm going to do is create a tab for each one of these uh, boxes, just like I did in the, in the diagram. So now we're going to go and fast forward, and I'm going, to, I'm going to fast forward. I've built all four of these tabs, and now I'm going to show you how I connect them together. So I'm going to go to the diagram view, and if you, th if you look at this, this looks very similar uh, to the diagram I just drew, right? So uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a relationship between the sales line and the cust table, and we're going to just connect customer to customer there. And you always want to go from the mini to the one. So here I'm going to connect this to the invoice uh, trans ID, uh, and that's kind of the relationship between the sales line. So everything floats to the sales line. You always got to figure out what table is kind of the, the hub in the middle of the wheel. And for this one, we're going to be looking at everything by our sales line. So now let's come and go ahead in here, and we're going to create a pivot table, and we're going to try to meet our requirement. So I'm going to go and bring in some attributes here. And uh, I believe we went ahead and fast forwarded. Uh, I created some calculated columns. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I brought in my some measures. I brought in the line amount, the packing slip amount, and the invoice amount. So now what you're seeing here is I'm creating a fourth calculated field that is taking the difference between the uh, sales line amount and the customer invoice amount. So you have to kind of be careful about which, which tables you want to use as your attributes and which ones you want to use as your measures. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and add that calculated field. And as you can see, I've met the requirement. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and reformat this here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and add a, I'm going to go ahead and add a slicer. I'm going to go ahead and what I call CFO proof this report by creating a slicer that allows me to slice this by the customer group, which was also part of my requirement. So as you can see, uh, in, 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 in literally four minutes here, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've met the reporting requirement that, that, uh, that was asked of me. But, uh, but that's not enough, right? Well, I don't want to just create one report. So let's go ahead and look at this report in AX. I've got, I just pulled up another report randomly, ship, shipped not invoice. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, I, I've got the same attributes in here. And to go ahead and fast forward, I've created uh, just through drag and drop in literally three minutes, but I'm running out of time here in my five good minutes. So, uh, but I, I also put another filter on here just to show it by customer. So as you can see, I've got what's been shipped, but hasn't been invoiced. Thank you for joining us uh, for this scary edition of Five Good Minutes in Microsoft Dynamics AX. Hopefully what you've seen is that if you create a strong data source, uh, your reporting possibilities are endless. And how, uh, and how it might take you uh, a day or two days to create one SSRS report, if you create one data set in a couple of days, you can build 30 or 40 different reports. Um, again, I want to uh, take the opportunity to thank all of the technical resources at MCA. Uh, hopefully this moment doesn't come back to haunt me. Uh, and uh, I appreciate your time, and I uh, look forward to you joining us uh, next time on 5 Good Minutes in Microsoft Dynamics AM. <laughs>